Well, if you're watching this video, you must be either new to landscape photography or somewhat new to landscape photography, and you're trying to decide which lenses to purchase. So maybe you're upgrading from a fixed lens, maybe you're upgrading from a smartphone, and you just want to improve your photography game. In this video, I'll give you my recommendation for what lens to start with as a landscape photographer. I recommend that you begin with a standard zoom lens. I know a lot of other YouTube channels and a lot of videos will talk about the trinity of lenses or the trio of lenses that should be used for landscape photography. And all of those are great and educational, but they miss the fundamentals that you should begin with first learning proper exposure techniques, proper framing and composition techniques, before you complicate things and move on to multiple lenses. Trying to learn these skills on multiple lenses will be frustrating, will in fact slow down your progress, I believe. Use one lens that serves the most purposes in landscape photography, then master your exposure techniques, your composition techniques, and then you'll be able to apply those when you uh, purchase more lenses to complete your kit. Let's talk about the typical trinity of lenses or trio of lenses that typically make up an experienced landscape photographer's kit. First is the mid-range zoom or standard zoom, such as the 24 to 70, 28 to 78, 28 to 75, what have you, which is what I recommend starting out to because it is the most versatile lens that will be in your kit. In fact, the majority of photographs that I still take fall within that mid-range zoom. Perhaps some of them are taken on my wide, my wide angle, which goes up to 35, but I'm still photographing within that range of the mid-range zoom, and if I only had the mid-range zoom, that's what I would use. The mid-range zoom, I believe, is the easiest to use because it more closely matches what our eye sees. There's very little distortion or compression that you'll find on the wide angle lens and a long lens respectively. Therefore, it's easier to compose, it's easier to expose with, and it will be less frustrating, especially for a beginner. So start with a standard lens, learn your skills, learn exposure techniques, learn your composition techniques, and those will transfer over to the other lenses that you'll buy in the future. There'll be a unique qualities of the other lenses that you'll need to work with that will modify the way that you do exposures and the way that you do compositions. Another benefit of having just one lens to start out with is when you get to your scene to photograph, you'll only have one lens to choose from. So you'll spend less time worrying about or futzing around with changing your lenses to try to compose. And you'll learn how to compose with the one lens that you do have better and better. The standard zoom also has practicality outside of landscape photography, such as street photography, some portraiture photography, travel photography, or shooting home events such as birthday parties. Also in the standard zoom range, there's a lot of third-party lenses available uh, other than just the OEM lenses. They tend to be cheaper as well. And there's really very little difference between an OEM high price lens and a third party lens in this category. In fact, I use a uh, third party lens for my standard zoom. And unless you're pixel peeping in, uh, at the corners especially, you really won't notice a difference. Then we have a wide angle zoom lens, which is typically 16 to 35 maybe 16 to 24 or something in that range that gives you that wide angle perspective. That's a good lens if you want to have a very large vista 
or if you want to distort the foreground when you have certain scenes. However, I believe using a wide angle zoom lens is a little bit more difficult to compose because there's so much more in the scene and because of the distortion in the foreground. So there's a little bit more frustration in using it and it takes a little bit more skill to use that it's better to develop once you've mastered your standard exposure and formatting skills or composition skills I should say. Also there's difference with how to focus when you're using a wide angle lens. If you're trying to get a lot in the frame then you may have to resort to focus stacking which is a little cumbersome for the beginner. I don't like to do it. I rarely do it but it is another factor that will complicate your compositions when you're shooting with a wide angle lens. And in my humble opinion the wide angle lens is the most overused lens in landscape photography. You rarely really need it. When you do it's good to have but you'll really, as your skills develop, you'll know when you need that and you'll use it better once you develop the skills on the standard zoom. And then we have the long range zoom or telephoto zoom. And these range anywhere from 70 to 200 or 100 to 400. And these are very helpful when you want to isolate a subject within a composition or you want to compress a composition with multiple subjects. And though that isn't extremely difficult, it does take a little bit more skill and you're better off, I believe, developing again your exposure and your composition skills with a standard zoom. Then once you uh, grow and learn those skills, you'll be able to better use a zoom lens in isolating your subjects and what type of uh, compositions work best for it. So for a beginner, it makes very little sense to start out with all three lenses. You'll be frustrated, you'll be struggling to learn all three lenses at the same time instead of just focusing on using one standard zoom lens to master your composition skills and master your exposure skills. And once you master those skills on the standard zoom, you'll be able to apply those skills to the wide angle lens, to the long lens, and learn what's unique about each of those lenses and how best to use those for the selected scene. So again, to repeat myself, start off with the standard zoom, learn composition skills, learn exposure skills, then once you have mastered those, purchase your next lens of choice and take that learning, relay it into the new lens and learn what's unique about those lenses as you progress. Now, when I first started out, I started out with the wide angle zoom, and I regret that. I love the lens, I still use it, but it took me longer to learn composition techniques, and I wasn't happy with the photos I was getting at first. Everything was too wide, I wanted to include everything into the picture, and uh, it ended up uh, slowing down my learning for a while. So I wish I would have uh, heard the advice to start off with a uh, standard zoom, Perhaps I did hear it and I ignored it, which uh, a lot of us do. We ignore the vice that's given to us. So I hope this advice helps you as you begin your landscape photography journey, or you, there's some tidbits of information in here that help you in your decision-making process. Landscape photography at first is very easy, but very frustrating until you master it and really get the photographs that you imagined you can get in the beginning. And most importantly, get outside, photograph, learn your skills.